Hi. So look who rolled back into town, our old Vespera. buddy, Vespera. How are you here? But you are. So we're gonna use Vespera to do something a little fun this time around. Now that we have more time with it, so we decided to do a fun new challenge and take a photo and make it the best photo possible. With a smart telescope. Yeah. With a smart telescope. So we thought of making a, a little challenge um, of taking a photo of an object and right now the Crescent Nebula is perfectly high in the sky. So that's gonna be our target. And we're gonna take the best possible photo of that with the smart telescope. So we took a picture of the Crescent Nebula a few years ago with our very first telescope, uh, which was okay at the time. And um, our goal back then was to reveal the very, very small and faint uh, soap, soap bubble, bubble nebula, yeah. which I am sure would be impossible with this, but who knows? I'd be very shocked to see if we can see it there. But our goal today will be to just uh, get the best possible picture ever. So the main challenge will be uh, the light pollution, the uncooled sensor, uh, which is uh, going to be a big problem because it's, it's super, summer, super, super hot here. And it's here. been 100 degrees consistently. Yeah, even at night. And also, um, because of the derotation, uh, it's going to be 10 second exposures. So those are the three main challenges, but let's see what we can do. So right now we're going to go online and uh, go on Astrobin and Google Image and all that, and try to find the current best image ever taken of the Crescent Nebula. So we set the Spera outside and all we had to do was simply to level it. And that's pretty much it. Nothing else matters and uh, we're ready and now we just have to wait for dark. In the meantime, I'm going to go on Astrobin and online in other places and look for the current best crystal nebula using a smart telescope, so Vespera or Stellina or anything else. And so far, um, I have not found many. This is pretty good already. Look at this nice crystal nebula. So we'll try to beat this image uh, as a fun competition, just to reveal a bit more data, a bit more gas and see if it's possible. Um, but this image currently looks pretty good. I think it's the best so far we've found online. And there aren't many images of this um, object using a smart telescope. Uh, if we go on the Vernis website in the gallery, there's plenty of great images, but I don't think there's any crescent either, which is uh, surprising. So I guess it would be a nice object to capture and we'll see how it goes. So the telescope was already level and now we just have to wait uh, a few hours because it was still daytime. And uh, look at this nice time lapse with those beautiful clouds, which hopefully will disappear very soon. Hello, Stella's ass. And we plan to spend several nights on this object. So we originally planned to do 10 hours, so maybe two or three nights uh, worth of data, and just combine each master TIFF file together and uh, process that. And here you can see the way I used the mosaic feature to uh, kind of frame the crescent. I know there's so much gas all around this object because it's in Cygnus and Cygnus is full of nebulosity, which is why I used the mosaic feature. And um, this will allow us to get a much wider field of view. And here we go, first night imaging. So we'll spend a few nights, maybe two or three or four until we have 10 hours of data and then we'll process the image. Okay, so here you can see the crescent nebula processed by singularity. This is an okay result. It's not amazing at first glance. There is some kind of gas uh, around like on the left or on the top right here, but not much. But I know for sure that you can get much, much better uh, by processing manually. And this is what I was able to reveal using PixInsight. So I combined uh, the data in PixInsight and processed it using my usual uh, Nebula workflow. And you can see here the difference between the file out of the Singularity app and the manually processed file. 
which is a huge difference, it's day and night. And you can also, you know, use different palettes, even though it's the color image because of the narrowband filter. So, so this is, I think, an HOO style combination of this same image. Although I do prefer the true color in this case. I love the reds of Cygnus. So the image is actually, wow, just incredible. I am very, very happy with the result. Better than expected. Um, of course, if you're watching this on a very big TV, uh, it might look very noisy, but if you're watching this on your phone or a small computer, I'm sure it looks look so amazing. And, you know, we talked about getting the soap bubble and you can see it just a little bit if you know where to look, which I'm we shocked. do. I, I was shocked seeing that. I was trying to star hope and compare with my other image and it's there, yeah, I mean, you can just barely see it, which is really crazy. And if you didn't know, an, ast an amateur astrophotographer discovered it. True. Mm. We missed all of it from Model 9, which is crazy, plus uh, during a very, very hot uh, season. So you can technically get a much cleaner image using the same equipment. So unseat us. So you can do it. <laughs> uh, we'll see you guys next time and kiss guys. guys.